Not all programs do interesting things. Some of them do nothing, others do something but never stop, and others do something but don't always stop, just sometimes. Among the interesting ones, that is, the ones that take some input, think about it for a while, and finally always return an output in a finite amount of time, does the time they will take always depend on the input in some meaningful way? In other words, given only the input, is there always a way to determine an upper bound to the time the program will take to execute? In simpler words, assuming not to use recursion, do we really need while loops? Or can we do with just four loops? Let's consider some examples. A program that computes the factorial function, which is the product of the first n positive integers, does exactly n steps before it terminates. So n is an upper bound to the number of iterations. A program that determines whether a number n is prime needs only to check if n is divisible by any number between 2 and the square root of n. A program that returns the nth prime number needs only to count primes up to a certain upper bound that depends solely on n. Given these examples, there would appear to be an upper bound for everything, so we should be good. But we can't just assume that we're okay without while loops. To be sure, we would need to check if all possible interesting programs can be written using only if and for. The obvious problem with this is that there are infinitely many interesting programs, or computable functions, as cool kids tend to say. If it's not so obvious that there are infinitely many of these programs, consider the following. The frankly uninteresting program that, given any input, always returns zero, fits our definition of interesting program, since it does return some value in a finite amount of steps. So does the one that always returns 1, and 2, and 3, and so on. So there are at least as many interesting programs as there are natural numbers. Since the natural numbers are infinitely many, the interesting programs are at least infinitely many as well. So too many to check, what do we do? First of all, let's simplify the landscape a bit, and only consider the programs that only take one integer input. These are still infinitely many, but at least that's some place to start. Now, what we can do is take all possible interesting programs that take one integer input. Remove the ones that contain while loops or mess with the index in for loops, because that's cheating, and order them lexicographically, that is, alphabetically, but also considering the symbols, for example using ASCII values for comparison. This way, every program is identified uniquely by its position in this list of programs. Now, let's do something weird. Let's define an interesting program that takes an integer n as its input and returns the result of the nth program in our list, called on n itself, plus 1. This is indeed an interesting, that is, computable, program. Because it takes an input and returns an output in a finite amount of time. Because the nth element of the list always takes a finite amount of time to stop. But wait, there's a problem. This new program cannot be the first of the list because when called on 1, it returns 1 more than the first program of the list. It can't be the second, because when called on 2, it returns 1 more than the second program of the list. In general, it cannot be an element of the list, because it always returns 1 more than it should. What does this mean? Well, unfortunately we have just shown that there exists at least a program that is very much interesting but cannot be written without using while loops. So we do need while loops after all. But is this really enough? We just said that there exists a program, etc. What on earth would such a program look like? Well, the best known example of such a program implements a very interesting function called the Ackermann function. This function, well, a version of this function, takes three integer inputs, n, x and y. When n is 0, the function returns y plus x. When it is 1, it returns y times x. When it is 2, it returns y to the x. When it is 3, it returns y to the power of y to the power of y to the power of y and so on and so on and so on, x times. In general, as n grows, it just keeps adding new levels of operations. This is the mathematical definition of the function, which is definitely non-trivial. It is possible to show that this function always stops in a finite amount of time, but the problem with it is that it grows much much faster than any function from our list ever possibly could. 
In computability theory lingo, the functions from our list are called primitive recursive. The exact proof that the Ackermann function is not primitive recursive, despite it being computable, is a bit too complex to fit in a video, but I'll link it in the description. In short, no, we can't do without while loops. And you know what else I can't live without? The sponsor of this... Alright, oh, this video is not sponsored. Oh well. <laughs>